Hi and welcome back to the MyGo YouTube channel. In this video we're looking at ultraviolet light or ultraviolet radiation. We don't normally discuss ultraviolet on this channel. We look at grow lighting and we talk about PAR which is the uh, light which is useful for growing plants and ultraviolet light is outside of this PAR range. But there's so much talk online and so much sort of anecdotal evidence around there about uh, the usefulness of UV in terms of growing weed indoors or cannabis indoors. It is well worth having a look to see what evidence is there for it and if there is evidence for it how can it be done and what's the best way to achieve it. Let's look at what is the ultraviolet spectrum. If you look at the total electromagnetic spectrum you can see over on the right hand side you've got far infrared and far red then we come into the power spectrum, which is 400 to 700 nanometers, or from the colors blue to red. And then way over on the left-hand side, we've got ultraviolet, and then down into X-rays and gamma rays. The further you go on the left hand of that electromagnetic spectrum, the higher the energy of the uh, photons emitted. So we know that you know, x-rays can be potentially damaging, uh, but UV also is potentially damaging. Those high energy particles can damage cells. So on the far end of the ultraviolet spectrum, there is UVC. UVC is very high energy photons, uh, electromagnetic energy. And we are not gonna discuss that here because there's none in the sun and it's dangerous. So the use of UVC, it is out there, people use it for sterilization, for example, um, and it could be used for pest control, but I'm not gonna discuss it uh, uh, in this video. We're gonna look at UVA and UVB. So where does UVA and B come from? Well, if you go outside, you can look at the full spectrum for the sun, and you'll see that there's UVA and UVB in it. It's a small percentage of the sun's total output, but significant nonetheless. The UVC and part of UVB is blocked out by O3 in the atmosphere, oxygen in the atmosphere. And so really from 300 nanometers and, le and lower, down on, on uh, sea level, most of that UVC, practically all of the UVC and about half the range of UVB is blocked out. So what are we left with? Well, we're left with UVB uh, from 300 to about 300 nanometers, so about half the UVB uh, range, and then UVA. So both of those are present in sunlight, and the hypothesis is that if you include those in your grow light spectrum, or you include it as a, a supplement to your regular spectrum, that you can improve the concentration in particular of THC in cannabis when you're growing and have higher potency in the output um, than you normally otherwise would. Again, a little note of caution with this is if you are successful in increasing the THC to a, to a high level, that's at the expense of CBD. So there's a trade-off of one against the other. And from a sort of general health point of view, it's considered to be less healthy to smoke very high THC content uh, cannabis without um, CBD to balance it off. So just another word of warning there, it may not be something you actually want to achieve. However, if it is your one and only goal, uh, let's look and see what the objective evidence is that this actually works. So I asked in a video, a few months ago for people to uh, let me know if they had any uh, sources of objective information demonstrating the benefits of UVA and B. And long story short, when you strip out the manufacturer uh, marketing material uh, where you know research has been done on behalf of companies to promote their products, we're coming down to very, very little evidence in fact, really there's one paper that everybody is um, sort of focused on and it's a paper done in the mid-1980s by John Lydon et al. They were the scientists, research scientists 
and they studied the effect of light spectrum on plant growth and on, um, in particular, concentration of THC uh, in, the, um, in the flower and in the leaves. So let's have a little look at this study and see what they were talking about. The experiments carried out by these scientists in the University of Maryland took cannabis sativa plants and they put them in two different circumstances. One had just sunlight um, with the UV filtered out, so it was sunlight through, through glass which filtered out the UV A and B. And they had uh, the same plants in the same circumstances, i.e. the same intensity of power light, and they supplemented them with UVB light. They supplemented them during the flowering stage for about six hours per day, right in the middle of the light cycle. They used what are called FS40 UV bulbs, which are 40 watt fluorescent tubes. They wrapped filters around them to try and block out the UVA. Uh, it has been questioned since as to whether those filters were actually um, working properly and effective and, and that the experiment may have actually been recording um, a result where UVA was also being um, shone on the plants. But I'm not so certain about that. All I know is that they were able to demonstrate a very impressive uh, increase. So the THC in the non-UVB grow was 25% and the THC in the UV grow, UVB grow with supplemented UVB was 32%. This shows a 28% increase in THC from uh, non-UV addition to having supplemental UVB. This is very impressive and has a huge wow factor. However, I've seen nothing else uh, other than, as I said, manufacturers um, marketing material which demonstrates a similar kind of increase. So it would seem um, that it needs uh, some other information to back it up. However, if we take it that this is true, it is showing that a relatively low amount of wattage being used in the grow can deliver a relatively high increase in THC content. I am pretty skeptical about this um, potential, uh, about this research. It's been 30 years since that paper was produced. Very little supporting evidence available um, to the best of my knowledge. I have linked whatever papers or uh, objective research that has been done in this area, published research, uh, in the description below. You can have a leaf through that and see what you find yourself. Uh, please let me know if you have uh, links um, to studies or tests that have been done proving or disproving this theory. Uh, and despite my misgivings, I have tested a wide range of commonly available UV sources and done some analysis on what may be the optimum settings for supplementing UV for your grow. That's in an upcoming video. Until then, look forward to your comments. Take care, bye.